What's up, best friends? Are you new to cybersecurity? Let's start right here. Now, this is an oversimplification of your network or maybe somewhere that you're even interviewing at. The reality is you have to contend with the internet today, software as a service or SaaS-based applications that you're paying for that has your data. And then you have to also fear of unsanctioned applications, maybe uh, something like a Dropbox that you're not paying for. And then you have private cloud that's gonna have your applications, but more importantly, that place is gonna have your data as well. Then last but not least, you have the data center. You have servers, and what do these servers always have? They're gonna have your data somewhere in that environment. And then we have to contend with the weakest link of the entire universe, which is your users. And those users, eventually they'll be happy because they'll be on Zscare, but they are working from anywhere. And when I say work from anywhere, that means at home, Starbucks, abroad, and even in the office. So anything that I say right here is the same over here. So your biggest liability in life is always gonna be your users. And so let's talk a little bit about the liabilities that are out there. So there's really four things that kind of kind of come into mind when we start to think about the landscape. One is gonna be around phishing and not the phishing you used to do with your grandpa. Uh, two could just be some type of malware. Three, a zero day type of attack. And last but not least, ransomware. And let's talk about this. So the, first and foremost, what we were trying to do if you were a bad person, you wanna fish the credentials of the user, which are you trying to lure them in to do something, plug in their username and password, because if they do that, now you can take over their identity and bounce around the network over here, or over here, or heck, even the SaaS-based applications and take that data, right? Now, maybe you'd be doing this with either malware or some type of zero day attack, depending on who you are uh, in the world and what they're trying to get from you. Two, when we think about malware, this is kind of like known existing bad things that are out there that these threat actors are trying to get your users to click on to compromise them. Again, not gonna be over here in your data center, not gonna be in the private cloud. It could be like a OneDrive link or heck, even a link out there on briandeach.com. And then depending who you are, maybe you're a financial institution, maybe there's a lot of money that can be taken, a zero day type of attack to get to these users because ultimately what they wanna do is they wanna compromise these servers with ransomware up over here, here and here exfiltrate your data, and then hold you hostage with that ransomware. So when we look at your attack surface, we look at users, this is why zero trust is the modern foundation. And what do I mean by that? This is where we get to bring in the zero trust exchange from Zscare, ZTE for short. If you don't know what that is, ping me in the comments, I'll be happy to help you. Our goal is to ensure that any traffic that's leaving one of your employees' devices is always gonna go through the zero trust exchange. When we do that, we're not doing like weird legacy firewall type of technologies. We're doing full proxy layer seven, decrypt that data and get hands and eyes on it, which means I can see over here and over here. Now, if a user is going out, they're clicking a link because they're not paying attention. Maybe it came into their personal email and it's going out to a newly registered domain and the sole goal in life is to capture your credentials and replay it somewhere else. Boom, we have your, your users covered to ensure when they click that link, they're gonna be safe. Number two, let's say that user haphazardly just wrote their username and password down on a file, the cleaning person came in, took that, and now they're trying to infect, doing different things. Maybe they'll log into the corporate OneDrive, upload a piece of malware that's up there, and then try to get users internal to the company to click on that piece of malware to infect them. We don't want that to happen. And what we do right here at the Zero Trust Exchange we call it Cloud Sandbox. And one of the things that's truly unique to our platform right here is that we have 160 points of presence globally. We have 50 million users on our cloud every single day. We're moving like 6.4 terabits per second. But the point that I have right here is that we have this complete cloud effect. If I see something horrible happen, I don't know, in Europe at eight o'clock in the morning, by the time you wake up, stretch, get out of your jammies, get your cup of coffee, or in my case, a rock star, we already have a signature that's been put out there cloud wide to protect all of your users from malware. Heck, even zero day type of attacks. And on that note, we actually have the ability to do AI instant verdict. And what do I mean by that? It means if this user here or here is going out 
and they're pulling something down that's benign, I just allow them to do their job. But if it's bad, I tell them that it's bad, and then I throw it into the sandbox to give you great IOCs and IOAs. But last but not least, when we're talking about ransomware, ransomware could be running over here on an end user's endpoint, over here, or heck, even on these servers running over here, or the servers and workloads running up over here in the private cloud. Our goal is to always leverage the cloud sandbox to prevent that from happening. What that really means is that we have the ability to say, any traffic that's kind of originating from over here, we're gonna send it through the zero trust exchange because zero trust means we don't trust anything whatsoever. And the same thing can be said over here for the private cloud. Cscatter Cloud Connector sends all that traffic directly here to Zero Trust Exchange and protects those workloads. And last but not least, we have the Zero Trust branch right here, our entry level into Zero Trust SD-WAN for any device in your environment that doesn't have our agent, have the ability to transparently intercept that traffic, send it to the Zero Trust Exchange, and that could be for your IoT stuff or heck, even your OT. Do me a favor. Explore our Zero Trust playlist for next steps. That's my time. Thank you for watching. Do me a huge favor. Like, comment, subscribe. Share it with your best friend. I'd appreciate it. Thank you.